Hello, Heywan. How are you? Good. Okay, so um, I'm just going to show you everything you need to know to use our laser cutter from start to finish. The first thing I always do when I come in the room is I turn on the laser cut fan. Mm -hmm. uh, just here is off. Yep. And then here is full. And this is low. Okay. So I put it to full. Okay. Uh, and I also turn the ceiling fan on. Again, that's off, that's full. Okay. okay. And that exhausts everything out. There's a fire extinguisher down on their floor if you need the fire extinguisher. The next thing I do is I put whatever material that I want to cut or etch in the laser cutter. And you can see there's rulers built in. And so I can see this particular object is two and a half inches by one inch. That's super important when we're working in Adobe Illustrator. If we want it to etch on the material, we need to know how big it is. Then I focus the laser, so I come over here. So incidentally, I've already turned it on. So I turn it on with the switch down here. And you have to switch the power bar on up here too, because this power switch controls the air pump that pumps air into the laser. Okay, okay so then I'm gonna focus it. Uh, this particular piece of wood is not quite in the right place, but I'm gonna push the focus button on the laser. And my that's my uh, focus tool there. And we know it's focused when that focus tool is just touching the top. And the way we kind of test that is give it a flick and it, if it kind of flips back and forth and then stops, you know it's focused. I'm just gonna come back into the machine. Uh, what I would do is move the, the bed up and down to focus it with the, with the buttons. So pushing that down button moves the bed down. Pushing the up button, that giant hand's getting in the way. Moves it up, and what I want to do is just move it up until that focus is just touching the material. And then if I give it a flick, it stops. So it's just in the right spot. And then back over here on the laser, I push reset. And then I move my material back to where it should be at the origin point there. Okay, and I shut the lid. The laser won't run with the lid open. Okay, so back at Adobe Illustrator, now that I know the size of my material, I need to specify the size here. So you can see I've already put 2.5 inches in the width, one inch in the height, and mm -hmm. it says inches here, that's important. Up here you can give your file a name if you want, but I'm not gonna do that right now, I'm just gonna say okay. And there we get our big canvas, okay. So I can write or draw anything on here and it will etch it onto the piece of wood I just stuck in. So mm -hmm. those two circles right there would get etched into the wood. I can move these circles around with this selection tool here, this black arrow. And then I can just drag this wherever I want. But let's say I want to cut this circle out and not just etch it. To do that, at the top there, we have settings. This is the fill color. Mm -hmm. oh, we're not focused, hang on. Okay, that, this one is the fill color, that's the inside part. This is the stroke, they call it, which is the outline. Mm -hmm. And right now it's selected to be black, and that's great. Our laser cutter only works in black and white. Okay. Uh, and then, see, this is the stroke width. That's how big the outline is. Mm -hmm. So right now that is 0 0.019 inches thick, and that would just etch. Mm -hmm. But if we wanted to cut out that circle, we have to change that number to 0 0.001 inches. That number cuts, okay. and that's just the way they've set it up. So that might not make any sense, but that's just how it works. Mm -hmm. But whenever you specify that number as a line thickness, the laser will cut that. Okay. So if I said print right now, we have it etch the oval on the right and cut out the oval on the left. Just to show you some neat things you can do, though, if I wanted to draw another ellipse here and overlap them, mm -hmm. what I could do is create a more complicated shape to cut out. So right now, it would cut out this, and then it would cut out this sort of half moon shape here as well. And then we'd get two separate shapes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine them into sort of one continuous shape. So I can draw a box around both, and go up to my menu at the top and say object and group. And what that does is it sticks them together so I can scale them as one object or rotate them as one object but what we want to do is we want to have the path there mm -hmm. go the stroke line to go around the entire outside and not through the middle here so that it's one shape so if I select that again I've already grouped it that's the first step the second step is to go to effect and go down to pathfinder and then choose 
add. And what that does is it combines it into one shape. So now it's sort of this snowman-y mm -hmm. looking shape like that. But you can do that with as many objects as you want. So you can keep adding to this shape to make it more and more complex. Mm -hmm. Object, group, effect, pathfinder, add. And now I have this sort of shape. And again, I can scale it, move it around, and do whatever, and it sort of saves that one path. So now when I go and have, have this, um, it's going to etch this, mm -hmm. and it's going to cut that. How can you change the depth of the etching? That's a good question. So black is etch as much as deeply as you can, and white is don't etch at all. So a shade of gray in between oh, is, changes, the, changes depth. the depth. Okay. So the darker the shade of gray, the, the, the deeper it'll go. Okay. And that only really makes sense on certain materials like leather and whatever. I don't know how that would affect glass or, or metal, I'm not sure. It would affect Because it doesn't seem to go, it doesn't, like I've etched into stone and it doesn't seem to go very deep. Okay. Uh, the same when I etch into glass. Okay. It sort of just sort of changes the appearance mm -hmm. on top of the glass. It kind of gives it a misty look and it gives a misty look when you etch into metals as well. Would it change uh, due to the font? Um, well, no. the depth wouldn't change, but the mm -hmm. shape changes based mm -hmm. on the font for sure. Okay. So like uh, if I put this letter T here, mm -hmm. um, you know, the font if I change the font, it's going to change mm -hmm. the appearance of it. Mm -hmm. If I want to change the color, I change the fill again. Okay. So lighter yeah. would be less deep. Yeah. Well, I just noticed when I change the font, it, it has some texture. It doesn't go as deep. Okay. So, well, lighter fonts maybe. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah. Okay. So when I'm ready to print, this is the most complicated step. Yeah. So we go up to file and we choose print. Mm -hmm. So file and print, just like you would if you're going to print to a regular mm -hmm. printer. Mm -hmm. You get this box here. Um, it's got lots of settings, but we have to go down here into the yeah. setup. Oh, let's have to focus again. There we go. I'm going to push setup. Mm -hmm. It pops up this. We make sure that um, we have the epilogue engraver chosen, and we go to preferences. Okay, so the settings that you use for this are different based on whatever material you're using. But the very first thing you should always do mm -hmm. is, again, you have to tell the laser how big the material is that's in there. Mm -hmm. And so it's 2.5 inches wide by one inch high, or whatever size material you're working with, okay? All right, so there are different settings for cutting and different settings for etching, and, um, and it uses slightly different words here, so raster mm -hmm. means etch, mm -hmm. and vector means cut. You can do just etching, just raster, just cutting, just vector, or you can do both. And when you do both, it etches first and then it cuts. Okay. And this file we just done yeah, yeah. Is, is both. both. Yeah. Um, so I just happen to know the settings for wood, but there's a piece of paper laying around somewhere, which we'll find later, that has all the settings. Uh, okay. So this chart right here, this exciting chart, shows us what settings mm -hmm. we need to use. So on the in the leftmost column, you scan down to find the type of material mm -hmm. you're using. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't recommend using any material that is not in this list. Okay. And some materials actually damage the laser. Okay. Um, for example, acrylic is fine, but plexiglass is not fine because whatever comes off right. um, can stick to the laser lens and mm -hmm. actually ruin it. So, whereas that's not the case with acrylic. Also, uh, plexiglass smells absolutely horrific. And acrylic smells pretty bad too, yes, but yes. I guess it's not as bad to breathe in. Uh, but it's being um, exhausted. Anyway, mm -hmm. okay, so this column tells us our engraver settings. Mm -hmm. um, I typically always just go with the 500 dpi mm -hmm. uh, because that's the number of dots prints, so you're going to get a nicer quality. Uh, but you could change it and go with a lower dpi if you wanted to. The first number is the speed, that's how quickly the laser tracks back and forth. Mm -hmm. The second number is the power, that's how strong mm -hmm. or how intense the light is coming from the laser. This column is all about cutting. Um, and so what you need to know for cutting is the thickness of your material. You mm -hmm. can cut one eighth inch, um, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong column, one eighth inch uh, wood mm -hmm. and one quarter inch wood. And thicker is harder. So it says you can use multiple passes to allow cutting thicker materials. Mm -hmm. I have tried that and find it is hard okay. to do uh, okay. anyway mm -hmm. but it's possible I guess anyway uh, we have quarter inch wood in there right now 
And so the settings we're going to use are the speed will be 20, mm -hmm. the power 100%, mm -hmm. and the frequency is 500. So let's look back here and do all our things. So we're doing raster and we're doing vector, we're doing etching and cutting. Uh, and so my settings from the chart for uh, etching into wood are 70. So I could just drag that slider back and forth till I get to 70. Or I can just double click the number and write it. So we want 100% power, so I'm just gonna write 100. So that's, my settings are good mm -hmm. for etching now. Now for cutting, We've got speed, power, and frequency. Again, I find it's just easiest to double click the number without erasing it and just type 20. If you try and push backspace, it gives you a dumb error that's annoying, mm -hmm. so just type over and then 500. Um, the way that it processes the images that you put in or can be different with this image dithering setting, and I've tried them all. The one that looks most like what you're trying to etch usually is the stucky one. It's okay. just some sort of random way of pattern instead of, I don't know, this looks kind of like newsprint, you know? Okay. That one, that's standard, and then yeah, stucky. You, you can show us this last one. Yeah, no, I, yeah. this is something else I've discovered more okay. recently. Anyway, I, I've tried them all, and stucky seems to look okay. the, the most like the image you started with. Okay. And so that's the one I use whenever I'm using raster, whenever I'm etching. Okay. Whenever I'm cutting, it, this doesn't matter. Okay. okay. So then I say OK. It brings me back to this window and I say print. And now it hasn't actually gone anywhere yet because yeah. in this window I also have to push print. Yeah. OK. And now the next step is to come over to the laser. We've already focused mm -hmm. it and everything we need to do. And I can check up here on the screen and it says job one untitled five. Where untitled five is the file name right. of the Adobe Illustrator program I'm working with. And then I can just push go. It's going to etch first, and then it's going to cut. So it's etching in the T that we made there, uh -huh. and then it's going to etch the circle. Um, if you lean on the lid, oh. sometimes that shuts the laser off. So sometimes uh, kids will be like, it's not working. Oh, why isn't it working? Yeah. As they lean in to try yeah. and figure out why yeah. it is. Because there's a sensor that shuts off the laser whenever we open it. Uh, so see if I open it, it's not lasering anymore. I close it, and uh, it's lasering again. And then it cuts after it's done etching. So you can see. There's that complicated shape we made, and it's cutting around the entire perimeter. I can't believe how fast it cut. Yeah, well, yeah, it depends. Cu cutting is much faster, actually, because it's because it's a vector. It's just yeah. it doesn't have to track back and forth. It just goes through, and you can see lifting it out. I, I left with my wow. the negative space yeah. that was the thing and the thing we cut out. Yeah. Um, and it's yeah. not hot. That's always everyone's first question. Is it yeah. hot? It's yeah. sometimes warm, yeah. and you often get sort of sooty dirt. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, but that's it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I won't have the problem of where I had it, it shifted when it printed. It's just because you didn't probably, um, you weren't particular okay. about this specifying the size initially and in the printer okay. setup okay. when you're going to print. Okay. okay. One other thing that I yeah. just want to include in the video is if ever you see a, a small flame where the laser is cutting, that's right. okay. Um, if you see a flame where the laser is not currently cutting, that's not okay. okay. And so opening the lid, like I said, just shuts off the laser, and then you just grab one of the spray bottles and spray it at the fire with the water, uh, and that should put out 99.9% .9 of the small fires, and we've had uh, a few cardboard-related incidents. Right. Uh, cardboard tends to catch fire more than anything else, uh, and but it was easy to put out with the, the spray. Uh, and if there's some giant... Uh, problem there's the fire extinguisher right here okay and you just rush in pull out the pin stick the nozzle on to the fire and pull the okay. trigger and it sprays an inert gas okay. so it doesn't ruin the, the laser when you're done using the printer just to show you you need to turn turn it off down here that's just a big power switch and you need and this is super important the most important is that you turn off the air pump because the air pump wears out after a certain amount of use right and then turn off uh, I only turn off the laser cut fan because the ceiling fan kind of just continuously pulls Perfect. air out of the room which isn't a bad thing 